third chapter, Flights Over the Surface City. We gather in our etheric temple to begin a trip again to the City of Light of the Brother Veritas community. We are eager for the new adventure, and thus we express it so among ourselves. We enter our group Merkaba ship that was stationed waiting for us in the garden of our temple. This time, we have decided to enter the space-time continuum of the year 2300, in which we hope to see finish the city, at least the one on the surface, to be able to admire its crop fields and fly over its surface. We enter the hyperdimensional gateway and time tunnel. The end of the interdimensional travel, we start flying over the old Kansas state. The vegetation is green and abundant, covering the damage left by the great earth changes and the cleansing action of Mother Gaia over the surface of the United States. The face of Mother Earth has changed. The sky is of a light blue with few clouds. At the distance towards the east we observe the city of light. Bright as a jewel, it is gorgeous. There are many extraterrestrial ships of various sizes flying over the city and heading towards the IFO port. As a ship approaches the city, we fly over some immense crop plantations on the peripheries. They are large land extensions that are being cultivated with all kinds of vegetables and fruit trees. We see labour workers gathering fruits and using agricultural machinery, but we already know that robots are the ones who make this labour. The city is fortified by a large wall that surrounds it. It has square observation towers at its entry points. We know there are twelve, but from our vantage point we only see some, being that the others are too far. We see teepees and indigenous people celebrating in the fields. They are dancing around the fire with plumage dresses and plumed hairdos and bright colours. They dance to the sound of the drum while passing their feet and legs over the flames without being burned. This is an indication of respect to the sacred fire of the fire elementals in nature, the salamanders. Whilst dancing, some introduce their hands in the base of the flames, take embers and lift them up in adoration to the caloric forces of life. Their hands look like fire torches, but fire does not seem to burn them. Now we fly over the IFO port. There are ships of different sizes landing and on the floor intense activity of beings of all sizes and colours from Zetas to Nordics and very tall beings. They're in charge of guiding ships to parking hangars. We see a group of dignitaries stepping down from one of them. So, we judge them by their exotic apparel of a golden shine with cape and fine fabrics. We continue our flyover, admiring the city's varied architecture that goes from awesomely futuristic houses to adobe urbanizations, some partially constructed inside boulders and natural roughness of terrain. There are all kinds of construction. We see a copy of Stonehenge. A copy of the Pyramids of Yucatan. The Pyramids of the Sun and the Moon. We see the architectonic complex of Giza of the ancient Egypt. the Three Pyramids and the Sphinx. And Greek and Roman temples like the Athena Parthenos of the Acropolis, 
as was in ancient Athens, and the temple of Olympia, with the colossus Zeus, Phidias' statue. We appreciate the Roman Colosseum. and the Hagia Sophia of Constantinople. All these edifications finely painted and with the roof intact as if recently built, nothing is seen in ruins. And far in the distance to the southeast of the city, we can see a replica of the Colossus of Rhodes, Helios the Sun God. and of the pharaohs of Alexandria that serve as a lighthouse or beacon tower for the navigation over the Mississippi River late to help spot and arrive to the city. It comes in handy in foggy days. Both monuments are near city gates and are a must-see touristic attraction for visitors and citizens and a good spot for family picnics since from near the top of the pharaohs we can see a spectacular view of Mississippi Harbour. The Colossus of Rhodes observes the Mississippi. Pilot of the ship tells us that the Colossus is near the tip of District Number 5, the Pharaohs of Alexandria, near the tip of District Number 6. The Eiffel Tower near the tip of district number 7. The Statue of Liberty is also located near a city gate at the tip of district number 4 and overlooks the Mississippi Lake. Our pilot tells us that this statue is the original that was in Ellis Island. It was rescued from the sea, repaired and bought here. New York is under the waters, as are all the coastal lines of the continental United States. There are many more classical edifices, such as the Taj Mahal, and monuments of historical reproduction that are found spotting the city. There are too many to enumerate them all. The ones mentioned here are enough as a small sample of what we see in our flyover and are important touristic spots to explore in this city. Some of the original monuments and buildings copied here do not exist on the planet Earth in the fifth dimension, have disappeared through history, were destroyed or are under the waters. All these historical landmarks are not placed at random in the city but are located at specific points that mark the metatronic fractal geometry of the city layout.